Welcome to Photoshop in 5, my name is Daniel White, also known as Dansky, and in this video we're going to cover the fundamentals for compositing multiple images in Photoshop. And this is the process of combining one or more images together, which is perfect for things like photo manipulation. However, it's very easy to use the wrong tools or techniques, which can lead to a, well, less than ideal result. So we're going to sidestep all those mistakes, which will help your work look much more polished and professional. Okay. Let's open up Photoshop and get started. So I have an image of a forest, and first of all I'm going to open up two more images. We have a man and a backpack. There we go. So first of all let's switch over to the man, and I'm going to select one of the selection tools. And then from this drop down here I can choose cloud, and this will give me a more detailed selection. And if I choose select subject, you can see the subject becomes selected. And it's done a very good job, and I can now use the quick selection tool to just refine that selection even further. And once you're happy with your selection, click the layer mask icon to mask out the subject. And let's give the layer a name, let's go for, let's go for Malcolm. And if we right click on the Malcolm layer, we can convert this to a smart object. Now smart objects are awesome, very very important, and I'll show you why later in the video. Now we also need to get Malcolm into the main document, so let's right click and choose duplicate layer, and then let's select my main PSD for the destination. Alright let's just make sure that Malcolm made it there safely, yes he did, fantastic, so now I can close down the original JPEG. Okay now we're going to repeat the same steps for the bag, we'll just get everything quickly cut out and then get it back in the main document. Right, now the bag is obviously massive, so let's use free transform to scale this down. Make sure you hold shift or it will distort. And let's go and position this on his back in around about the right place. And if we select both the subject and the backpack, we can then use free transform to scale them both down together. Let's pop him in the right place and let's flip him horizontally as well. So go to edit, transform and choose flip horizontal. Now next we need to choose the topmost layer, go to the adjustment icon at the bottom and select hue saturation. Drag the saturation all the way to the left, removing the color. And this trick is very useful for balancing exposure without the distraction of colors. So let's hide the backpack layer and select Malcolm. Now we're going to add a curves adjustment layer and you can click this icon to add a clipping mask so any changes are only going to affect the layer below, which is the subject. And the goal here is to adjust the curve slider so the darkest parts of the subject match the darkest parts of the background. And you can see I'm bringing up the blacks now which is making the blacks a lot lighter. And you want to try and balance the shadows, midtones and highlights between both images. And you can click the eyeball to get a before and after preview. Okay, exposure balanced, let's hide that top layer and we're going to add another curves adjustment layer. Again, clip this to the subject and now make sure you have the adjustment selected and not the mask. And then hover over the word auto, hold down alter option and click. Now you can see that the curves have changed and of course the window has popped up on my second monitor, oops. Right, let me just go and retrieve that, there we go, you should see this pop up and select the option find dark and light colors. Now first of all let's select the shadows and you see the colour picker appears, and we want to sample the darkest part of the image, effectively the shadows in the photo. Now we're going to do the same for highlights, now you can see if I sample this leaf it's not really a highlight, it goes a bit too yellow. And I could sample the highlights from this part of the image, but it's off in the distance and not where the subject is, so the colour correction isn't going to be ideal. Because we want to balance the colours between the subject and the environment that he's actually in. So I'm going to try sampling this little bit of colour here which is very bright, but still in the same vicinity. And there we go, that looks a bit better. Right, let's click OK, and then choose no on the pop-up so this doesn't become the default settings. And let's do a quick before and after so you can see the balancing of colours in action. Yes, it's subtle, but it does make a big difference. Right, now let's do the same for the backpack. So let's select the layer, and add a curves adjustment layer, add a clipping mask, and then adjust the curve slider. Now rather than do the colour again, we can hold down Alter Option and drag this layer to create a duplicate, and then hold Alter Option and click between layers to quickly add a clipping mask. So we don't have to do that colour balancing all over again, and we can now get rid of that hue and saturation layer. Right, next we need to add some shadows, so select the topmost layer above the subject and add a curves adjustment layer. Again, clip this, and we're going to grab this right side and drag it all the way down. Super, super dark. And obviously that's not ideal, but what we're going to do is select the layer mask and use Command or Control I to invert this. Then grab the brush tool with white as the foreground colour, and then from the drop down we'll choose a nice soft brush. 
Now you can just scribble all over this and definitely don't do that. So let's undo that and instead adjust the size of the brush with the square brackets and we're now going to brush in some shadows because the bag is on the subject's back and there would be shadows cast from that. And if I go and turn this off and on, you can see the difference it makes. Right, now let's select the background layer and again we're going to add another curves adjustment layer and we'll clip this to the background as before and then bring those curves down from the right hand side. Invert the layer mask and then with the brush tool and white selected, we can brush in some shadows. Now I'm doing this very quickly, but when doing this, you definitely want to consider where the light is coming from and where the shadow would be cast. Now a trick I like to use is make this darker and then bring the brush tools flow percentage down, which enables me to use the brush tool together with black or white to brush in the shadows a bit more gradually. Now I'm doing this very quickly here just to demonstrate, but definitely don't rush this step. Otherwise it might make everything look a bit more fake. Now we're going to add another adjustment layer to the background and this is going Going to be solid color. Let's choose a color similar to the highlight that we selected earlier. So something really bright. Let's invert that layer mask. And for this, I'm going to bring the flow down to just a few percent. And then let's increase the size of the brush. And I'm going to use this to brush in some fog and atmosphere. And I'm going to brush over that area, that pathway in the distance more, so it builds up more fog in that area. And whilst this does look good, unfortunately, there's no fog or atmosphere over the subject. So let's fix that by selecting the topmost layer in the layer stack and then adding another solid color adjustment layer. This can be the same color or a very similar color. And again, let's invert that layer mask. And then using the brush tool and a higher flow percentage, I'm going to position the brush over his shoulder, make it nice and big, and then click, shrink the brush down, click, and then repeat this a few times. And let's click a few more times around his shoulder just to make the light more intense. And this is a nifty trick to create a staggered glow. And this just helps the subject, the environment, and that foggy atmosphere blend together much more seamlessly. And the linear dodge blending mode can make things look more realistic as well. And if it's too punchy, just bring down the opacity ever so slightly. Right, this last step, in my opinion, is the secret sauce, and this will really help enhance everything that you've done. So let's use the keyboard shortcut, select all and copy merged, and then paste. And this will paste your entire design onto a single layer. Let's give it a name and convert this to a smart object. And the reason smart objects are awesome is because we can now add smart filters. So let's go and choose camera raw filter. And this feature is incredibly powerful. There are tons of settings, but the ones I want to focus on are under effects. So you can crank up the texture. And another one that you can increase is the clarity. They don't need to be 100%, even just a small amount can make a big difference. And while we're here, let's play with an early access feature. This is called lens blur and we can click apply and it'll take a second to load. And Photoshop will generate a depth map from this image and we can adjust the blur amount and the type, but we can also visualize the depth. And I can now select blur and play around with the properties. Let's increase the brush size a bit. And that blur on the left edge is a bit harsh, so I can just brush in a little bit of softness. And this will help the blur look a bit more gradual. And alongside you can select focus, and this will remove the blur and make things a bit sharper. And if I click on the eyeball icon, you can see the difference this makes. And once you're happy, click OK. And these camera raw filter settings are all listed under the layer as a smart filter, which means they can be edited or deleted. And of course, if you spend a bit longer on it, you can end up with something like this. So that's it from me and hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you to Photoshop for having me here and remember to subscribe to the channel for more Photoshop goodness. But in the meantime, that's it from me. Take care and I'll see you soon.